Vroom, vroom. <laughs> Hi, Ivan. We're arrived at Brooklands. And it's not raining. <laughs> right. So what have we got today? Well, what it all boils down to, my dad and Samson's all started here. They used to come from Peabody Buildings in Notting Hill. And my dad used to be a mechanic and he would ride in the car. And then after the war, obviously, mm. the Samson weren't worth like they were. And we bought a Samson and I helped him get it going. So it's the first car I ever rode, had anything to do with. So then, I thought we've got to have a Samson and eventually I bought this car. A very lovely original car but needed a lot of work. And it just so happens, by sheer coincidence, the first time this is going to be seen by anybody is at Brooklands. Wow. wow. So, you know, that's pretty good, I think. Yeah. Okay. Well done. <laughs> Carry on, my friend. I'll leave you to it because I've got other much. people coming in. I'm sure you've got plenty to do. Bugger. It'll go in a minute. It always starts right away. Bit of a tickle. Oh. Oh, oh shit. That's fuel pissing out. That was quite a bit of fuel then. Fuel makers tap. Do you think that'll work? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was very technical. Yeah, I'll do. In the gap. Oh bugger. Where the fuel pissed out all over the floor. It's not running out now, is it? No. Right, this all started about four years ago when I went to Portugal and bought this most original Samson, 1926. Needed a lot of work, but such an original car. It never been destroyed, messed about with. Unfortunately, the woodwork was riddled with worms and somebody had made a woodwork which wasn't a very good job. So anyway, we took it to pieces and there are videos on Ivan's shed. Anyway, so here's the car after having a load of work done. I'll go around it and tell you what we did. We took, it, we took the body off and I found a firm that could do the woodwork and as it happened, it was done by a man in a shed. And luckily, he was a pattern maker. And I mean, they used to work in very small tolerances. So the woodwork was absolutely magnificent. And originally, it was done in a beach. In, in, apparently, in uh, France, they used beach. But anyway, we managed to get the beach. So we went to a lot of trouble, got proper beach. And he made the frame. And then I took it and had the original panels put back and they fitted perfectly. But anyway, when they fitted the panels, I said, don't knock all the dents out because I don't want it looking like brand new. And, uh, and there's a feature at the back which we'll look at, uh, which we kept. So anyway, I'll now walk around the car and go through it with you and tell you what we did and explain why we did it and, you know, 
and then you can find fault with us if you like, because we don't care. Anyway, so here we go. These catches on the bonnet were missing. So the holes got welded up and we bought catches. I had a load of original ones, but they were all odd and some of them worked and some of them didn't. And in the end, we just went to vintage supplies and bought some new ones, which are quite good. And I rubbed them up with a bit of um, wet and dry so they didn't look shiny brand new. You'll also notice on this car there's bits of chrome. That shouldn't be chrome. That shouldn't be chrome. But it was obviously worked on in the 60s, I think, because it was very fashionable in those days to chromium plate things. So I thought, well, part of this history, what's the point in stripping it off and having it nickel plated? I couldn't see any point. So if you, if you say the chrome is wrong, you're right. But it's part of its history. So anyway, so let's look at the engine. The catches work nicely. Because one of the things with these old cars is, especially on the Bentley, they hold the bonnet down really strong because it helps to stiffen the front of the chassis. So if you get the bonnet really held down, it, it you know, and it's essential on a Bentley. Anyway, that's the original exhaust. And then we made an exhaust um, with a silencer. And that's the mag that was on it. And I worked on that and got that going. These are the original which obviously will get replaced eventually. But I tried to not touch it mechanically. I thought, let's get it looking like a car, my usual. So we cleaned the sump out and we've had it running uh, with the mag. And, and the, one of my big problems was I didn't have an original starter motor or bracket. There was a starter motor and a bracket, but it wasn't original. And I wanted to try and get this car's near right as I could. Anyway, I managed to find the bracket, which was a miracle, and we had a starter motor, but all the brushes were broken, and it was in a bit of a state. And it so happened that I had a 1952 starter motor, and we looked at them, and the brush holders and everything were exactly the same. So that's 1926, the other one's 1952, and the brush holders went straight in. So we managed me and John, to recondition that start motor. I had to make a new, um, what do they call it? Um, um, piece just here to hold the start motor. But anyway, that's all original now, which it wasn't when I got it. So I'll press the start and you can see how nicely it works. Switch it on, make sure it's in neutral. Now that works like a charm. Right, so then, obviously, the bodywork and everything, but we had to rewire it, and as you can see, we've sort of rewired it like the original. We didn't have an original fuse box, because I don't think they had fuses, but anyway, we've, um, we've fitted a more modern one, which is not right, but, you know, it's good enough. But I did manage to find the original cutout, which we never had, and, and it works, so that's good. So these are a bit rough, but we'll replace them eventually. The radiator had a leak in the bottom hose, so we took the radiator pieces and we made up a new bottom hose where it goes into the radiator and soldered it in, and of course it don't leak now, so that's good. I took all the suspension to pieces, and I looked at the ping pins, and, the, and it's all like brand new. So I decided not to do great restoration. All I've done is cleaned it and painted it with chassis black. The eagle-eyed people will notice that it had knock-on hubs, what you hit with a hammer, which I will put back, but it was very convenient to have them on the trials car. So I put those on for the moment, but I'll put the knock-ons back because eventually I'll find some. But it was very good to have them for the trials car. So that's a little bit of swap in there, but that'll go back. These headlamps I managed to find in France. Now, again, people tell me it should have Marshall headlamps. I don't think so, because being a cycle car, 
unless you paid extra, you'd get very ordinary lamps. And these are ordinary, but I think they're nice. And they're made in France, and they look dead right. So that's all good. Luckily, this car has got its original chassis plate, which is very good. And also, it's got its numbers on the on the um, hinge here, which, you know, very rarely do you get that. Right, so that's that. So as I say, now you can screw the bonnet on and you can wind them up and it pulls the bonnet down beautifully. Bit of messing about to get them in the right place, I must say. But they, they really, really work. Right, so now we go around to the um, carburetor side. Oh dear. Right, it's got a barrel throttle carburetor, which we haven't touched hardly. I cleaned the engine up a little bit, and uh, luckily this piece of metal came in the Don Hill stuff, so that, that is dead right, I think. Anyway, so that's what we've done there. Putting it on modern petrol, because I don't worry about petrol, I just put whatever you can get. And it ran reasonably well, but we richened it up just a fraction and it transformed it. So it's quite obviously modern petrol needs a little bit more, you know, probably because it's got methanol in it or whatever. But anyway, we richened it up a little bit and it goes well. The dynamo, we took that to pieces, like brand new inside. We couldn't get it to charge no matter what we did, but there was nothing wrong with it. It turned out that... The, the connection we put in the cutout was shorting out. Bit elementary, really, but you know, we're not the cleverest people in the world. The bonnet, I just had had it repaired. You know, there were bits of it that were a bit rusty and crabby, so we had it repaired. And you can see the repairs, so you know, everybody will know what's happened to this car in the future. So. So now we get to the mud guards. These mud guards at the back, these came with the car. They were rusty, but they were all right. Uh, it was a bit of luck, really, because the car was all loaded up. We were about to leave, and the bloke went, oh, I think, they, and he went over, and there they were. So we were lucky to get them. And one of the reasons you want them is because they've got this step which, you know, it's a bit of a job for anybody to do that, whereas getting on there, it's a lot easier. So anyway, so that was it. We decided to fit the rear wings, but we didn't have any front ones. So the people who fitted the panels for me made the front wings exactly the same, more or less, you know, in the same feed. A lovely job in steel. So they weren't cheap, but it's a lovely job. The other thing that we did, we fitted the original beaded edge wheels, because when this car was new, it would have had beaded edge wheels. So we had those made up, and uh, Brockley supplied the tyres, so that was the wheels. Um, so now the windscreen, we went on to vintage supplies and bought the bits of brass, because there was an article in the Samson magazine about how to do it, so we read the article, we didn't use their method exactly, but it was a help. But we used a bit of brass along the bottom that you could put this rubber channel in to seal it. Um, and then obviously it was silver soldered, nickel plated, um, and then the glass, we had the glass cut and Tiger sealed it into the frame. So that is Tiger seal in there. And of course it works beautifully. So that was the windscreen. Now it never had any of this. It never had any of this trim. So I looked through the pictures, and there's a car in France that had one owner for 56 years or something. Absolutely a very original car. It's been restored, but it looked to me like that. Looking at the photographs, the bit of bead and that. Now there's a bit of a story attached to that because apparently somebody was killed in the Samson by hitting the head on there. And they said from then on, 
they'd always trim the edges of the body to make them soft, which is not a bad idea, really, because I've caught my elbow on that a few times, and I can tell you it hurts. So, so that is that. We did it in vinyl, because originally this car would have been done in Rexine, and, um, you know, it's no point in doing it in leather, because it's a cycle car. It was a cheap car. It wasn't, you know, and not only that, Rexine was better, because when it rains, it don't soak the wet up. In fact, we used to have a four and a half litre Bentley that had Rexine seats, and when it was new, they actually paid extra to have Rexine instead of leather, so there's a bit of a story there. Um, again, because I'm, I like to drive my cars, and you can't expect everybody in the world to know about old cars, so if they haven't got stoplights, there's a good chance that they won't realise you're stopping. So this car is fitted with stoplights and lights. It isn't fitted with indicators, but that could easily happen. Um, and so that's why it's got all these lights and that's why they're high up and everything. Not worried about originality. So long as it looks good, that's good enough because you need that on a modern road. Now this bit here was on the original bodywork. Somebody had obviously done that in Portugal because they're so easy to keep backing into things and they're always dented. And I thought, well, we could obviously take it off and make it look original, but if I was to meet some old boy in Portugal, <coughs> excuse me, who knew this car, he'd probably go, oh no, that's not the car I remember, because the car I remember had this bit on the back. And as I thought, it wasn't exactly ugly. It's a bloody good idea, so I've left that. So that's not work, Samson, but... I think it's a good thing. So that's it, right? So now we go around and we get to the trim. Now, these seats are completely wrong, but one of the reasons I did them was because the original seats, which I've got, were very crabby. Now, if you take that covering off, clean it all up, and put it back, it's going to look like new. So, it, you know, there's no point in having the original seats and making them look like new. Plus the fact I wanted the seats adjustable. So I thought, well, if this car ever becomes an artifact, they could just take that out, throw it all away, and put the original seats in it. Because we happen to have them, which is a miracle, really. But the last thing I wanted to do was to make them look new. And I also wanted it so that my granddaughter could drive it or virtually anybody could drive it. So as you can see, it's now adjustable. So you can put the seat forward or you can put it back. And I think that's a good thing, you know, because ladies don't want a big cushion behind them. They want to be able to adjust the seat. So that's what that's about. But then the next problem is getting into the back because the spare wheel could be in the back, although it's not. And obviously, um, a bit of luggage or whatever. So, I'll show you how we've done it. Come in here, Tanya, and you'll see it. So, this lifts out. got a handy little tray there with a thing for taking the wheels off but obviously when it's got its knock on nuts you won't need that so you undo that and then that lifts up and you can put that lump of wood in there that holds it and then this this is a panel which I've made up, which is going to need something a bit clever in this, because when you drive it, it jumps out. But anyway, that's going to be really useful. And then you can see the woodwork. What a beautiful job they did of the woodwork. And obviously, the panels all fit lovely. But I thought this would be quite good, because if it rains and you're going along, all that lot gets wet. So I decided to make this panel up which drops in there and then that 
it goes on there. But we probably have to make something better than that because it does jump out. So there you are. So then, so then obviously, you can put that down, screw that back. Says he. Useful little thing for knickknacks. And the seat goes back. We obviously, this colour is a bit of a rare old colour, but underneath, there, when we took a bracket off, there was some of the original colour. And this, we got it looked at by the, well, we, we got a colour chip and we went along. And this was the nearest we could get to it. It does look a bit pink, but I like it, you know. Anybody can paint it just an ordinary colour, so I'm very happy with that. Um, then we had a bit of luck with the panel. I was given that panel, which is like ever so rare. And then normally, it's funny old metal that turns to nothing, so that was good. It turns out that the names on this plaque are the names of the people that owned it. And apparently in the 20s in Portugal, you had to have your name on the car somewhere so that they could tell who owned it. A bit like on the number plates now. We did a we did a thing on doing the steering wheel because it's a Rennie Thomas wheel, and we squirted it with Araldite, and it's now very good. I found a, a a gauge to go in the dash, which was not original, and it says Metallurgique on it, and I thought, well, that's all right because it's not original anyway, so that's good. But it's a flow meter. So that all that happens is when you start the engine and it's got any kind of oil pressure, which is not a lot on a splash fed engine, it just turns, goes from red to white. But we haven't connected that up yet. Of course, as usual, they're never finished. They're never finished. You drive them and you do that and you do another little bit. So, you know, so that's one of the bits that's got to be done. But that's the original dash, just cleaned up slightly. That's a new piece of wood which we made from mahogany. John made this panel here. So, you know, you can, you can put your passport in there or your whatever, which I think that turned out really good. Coconut matted, which I put in all my cars because it works. And, um, and that's it, really. So it's all turned out really good. The back axle's like brand new. The gearbox is like brand new. It's a very, very, very good original car. And I hope we haven't spoiled it, really, because, you know, but it wasn't good enough to just clean, the, clean it up and use it, because the woodwork was desperate. And um, so there we are. So now if we use it a lot, it'll start to look old, and that'll look marvellous. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take Tanya for a ride in the car so you can see how it goes. Are you ready for that, Tanya? <laughs> yes, yes, she's saying. Oh. No. There's a hole in the seat here. When the man did the trim, I got him to put that hole because I decided that if I decided that, you know, I had somebody who needed seat belts, I mean, some people can't go in a car without seat belts. We could put a lap strap through there. And actual fact, this bit of the body is so strong that you could probably have one going over like a modern, like a modern, um, set of seat belts almost but anyway we haven't done that but um you know at least it's got a hole if we have to because even having a lap strap's good because i had well i didn't have a ha accident but i saw somebody once had an accident and the person sort of dug their seat and they came up like that and they hit their head on there so even a lap strap is better than nothing in my opinion especially in an old car that don't stop like modern ones but I always leave a big gap because, you know, you've got to be sensible again. So, uh, so we screw the bonnet down tight and then we'll go for a little ride.
apart from the pot piles which will be repaired. I'm very pleased with that, I think that's very good. I think it's a bit stiff, but you know, I don't say that. But I suppose when you've got two people in their normal luggage, you might need all that strings. Like in a road in France, it's so much better than here anyway. It's probably dying to go to France. I took it to Brooklyn on Sunday, but I was so tied up in a hall in Scotland, I didn't have much time to do anything with this. But it wouldn't start. It would not start. 